Oh boy, do I have a game for you today. This was a game that really passed me by because I've never been a massive one of the economic sort of strategy games and things like that. I've loved getting down and dirty in the battles, but playing this game really has given me a new perspective on banks and earning money and being evil and selling weapons and uh, making money off the less fortunate. But it is fun if it's just in a game, right? Right? Sure. Welcome to Evil Bank Manager. Yes, this is a game set in sort of the 1500s where you're going to be going around, you're going to be making money, and you're going to be doing it in the best ways possible by hurting as many people as possible. Thank you so much to Hamster Gaming for bringing me the game and sponsoring this video. If you want to go and check it out, make sure you click the links in the description below. Now, it does have a very similar aesthetic to EU4, as you might expect, especially the map overworld view, looking into different countries and how they're getting along with each other. That's something you're going to want to be looking out for in the later. But what is the goal for the game? Well, of course, it's to be the top of the world. Everyone knows that that's what the banks do, and it was no different in the medieval period. Getting all the money, and then you have the power. Doesn't matter how big your army is, you can't fund it without banks, and this is your job. It's looking at it from a different angle. Now, quickly off the bat, what is really the best way? I'm not going to lie to you. Probably doing a war dog. You know, making people declare war on each other, selling the weapons. Hey, ho. Oh, you accidentally declared war on this person? How about you have some weapons along with it? That's really how you're going to be making the most money. But let's talk a bit about the game before I get into the live commentary section of the video. There are four parts to the bank to think about. Investments where you buy real estate, things like buying houses that will then make you money through rent later on, buying farms, buying mines to get you those resources to make weapons. These are things that you're going to really want to be thinking about getting as many as possible early doors. And the more resources you can get, the more opportunities you're going to have later get. You also have credits. This is for loans and interest where you can send out loans to people and making sure they pay Pay you back and if they don't that's where the guards come in now guards I'll get into a little bit later but these are the guys that you generate fear people are less likely to try and run away with your money and loans if you have enough fear and if they do you're gonna be able to get it back easier and of course we have espionage this is where you can annoy people basically putting your two cents in there metaphorically and literally to make sure they do and bend them to your will here you're able to make them declare war on each other, but also the more tame things like, you know, make your agriculture worth a bit more and increase value on different parts of your infrastructure and buildings. First off though, you're going to want to start hiring people. Hiring people in order to find you good investments and of course to find you good loans to send out and making sure that they find you the trustworthy people to do it so they don't run off with your money. Now, looking into the map, as I said, this is the very EU4 looking type area. This is where you can find the best places to find a bank branch. Yes, that's an alliteration I care not to do again. At the start, you're going to want to find the best places. Now, everywhere is quite expensive, especially when you get to the middle areas of countries where the cities are as well. You're going to be spending a lot of money to set up a bank branch here, but this is going to be more later game. Here will give you more chances for investments. But start off, you want to find somewhere that's pretty cheap, around the 20 to 40,000 pound area, and you want to make sure that they've got good places and good opportunities for investments and loans as well. Once you've done this, now you can start investing. Make sure you're looking into things like mines, which are very useful for making weapons, log or lumber camps, which are very good for making bows and arrows and that sort of thing, and of course houses, which as I said, are one of the best ways to generate income early game if you can find the right ones and make sure you're doing it at the right time. But what about the weapons? Of course you need the mines and the lumber camps to make these weapons such as swords, halberds, crossbows and bows. But then you need to make sure you're finding someone that's at war in order to sell them these weapons. Now you can sell them on the civilian market. Here you'll get a decent amount, but if you really want to be making the money, the big bucks, you're going to want to make sure people are at war and then sell them to the side you think are going to win. Don't sell them to the side they're going to lose. That's just a waste of your money and you won't get any increase in influence in that way. There are so many different parts to this game and it would take me forever to go through all of them. So in this coming up bit of live commentary, I'm going to be showing you the early game, the early doors and the best way to really start it. Investing in small places, starting to get resources in mines to build up your iron reserves and then transferring them and smelting them into weapons. Then selling these weapons on to bigger armies and getting your money back that way. But without further ado, let's get into the live commentary section of Evil Bank Manager. Okay, so pretty early game. I've been, you know, 
investing in a few things. I'm going to go to my next move now. According to rumors, the minimum acceptance value of banks will soon change. Any banks that are cheaper than this value will have to quit the big game, which is a thousand. So if you're below that, you're, you're basically lost. So you're going to want to sort of keep yourself above that. Now, as I mentioned in the post commentary, a lot of the early game is really investing in new things. So as we can see, if we've got, we can probably invest in this a bit more. Some houses. Houses are pretty good. They're not going to get you a ton of money, but you're going to get a decent, you know, wage coming in from houses. Uh, so, you know, why not purchase that? If we have a, a look at the real estate here. We can see this cottage that we've just bought is gaining us 1,106 profit per turn, which is actually pretty good. But it can sell for quite a lot. So if we need to, we can also sell that. If we look at the industry, we're getting 554 iron per year as well from that and agriculture. Uh, that farm is pretty bad. We're going to sell that farm. Um, mostly because we don't need that. We've got some... Uh, there is luxury items, as I mentioned. You can get things like furs, sapphires, all that sort of stuff. But in terms of resources, we've got a decent amount when it comes to getting uh, iron. So if we look at our industry, we're getting 554 iron per year. Well, it's mine, so I'm guessing it's, uh, I'm guessing it's iron or silver or something like that. And if we go into, of course, our weapons, as I said, we can go and start creating some weapons, of course. We've got a lot of iron, a lot of iron. Which is great. So, to be fair, uh, we'll just get... Yeah, why not? Let's order them. We get them made. We don't have much iron left, but that's fine because we can do stuff with this. Now, what we can do, we can either go to the exchange and we can actually sell these weapons that we now have. Which will... If we sold everything, we'd get about five grand from that. But there's also another way of doing it as well. If you go into this war section, there's no wars in the world at the moment. Well, that's nice. That's happy. <laughs> but if you go into the war section, what you can do is you can see who's at war. And then you can basically go onto the map and you'll be able to see who's fighting and where they're fighting. Now, as a bank, what you're going to want to do is find the winner of that fight. Now, of course, the fight's not going to happen. So it's a bit of prediction. But you can th see things like how much money is being invested in that fight. Who's really part of that fight. Their allies and everything. And if you invest in the right side make sure they win, give them extra weapons and all that sort of stuff, then you're going to get a pretty good return, selling them weapons. And of course, we all know that selling people weapons is a great idea. If we look at espionage, let's go straight into that. So, I mean, our relation level isn't great, but we can get have a meeting as well. Can't have that, so we can get our relations up. Once we get up here, we can start, you know, swaying people, and we can actually start the wars on our own, of course. But we need to get our influencers up faster. Our influence is up to 228. Now, what if I wanted to get my influence up properly, quickly? Well, if we go into the HQ and we look at the espionage, this is how we get influence. We can see the sort of influence these people are having as well. They've got 40 influence now. We don't really need much more at the moment, probably later, but at the moment we'll be okay. So let's do that. Now, have we got any more investments that we can look into? Another cottage. Okay, produces six gold. That's I'm not quite sure how worth that's going to be. I think that's actually a little bit bugged out there. But we're going to leave that for now because I want to look into a little bit of getting more weapons because we uh, don't have all that much weapons. We've, we've managed to get our iron back up a little bit though and we have a fair amount of weapons in stock. But we can choose to auto-produce weapons. Hmm, that is interesting. We could do that rather than having to come back each time, but we're going to leave that for now. We're going to get our iron stock up a little bit. Is Okay, we have a war. Okay, so we can have a look at this. So if we take a look at the war, if we go to on the map, now, neither of them have allies, and you can see Japan versus the Yemen. Uh, whereabouts is it? Is here, is it? So here we have Japan, and I'm guessing this is... So this is the war here. So it looks like Japan is probably on the side that is most likely to win. Now, there's not that much in between. Sometimes you'll find armies that are uh, way more powerful and you're like, okay, let's go straight to them. But there's not that much in between. But to be on the safe side, we're going to invest in Japan here. So we can join the war on the side. We're going to sell them some weapons. Now, what weapons do we have to sell? 
So we just give them all of that. That's going to give us 5,470. A little bit more than if we were selling it to the civilian market, if you remember. It was about 2,500 for each of the halberds and weapon and swords, giving us about 5,000. So this is an extra about 470-ish gold that we get from that. So let's sell that. And see, ResiBank is now participating in this war, giving them 4,973 gold and two pence into their army cost. So as you can see, they're now 7,458 in terms of army cost versus the M. So now they're pretty far ahead. They're most likely going to win this war. They've got more weapons. They've got more resources. Now, you can actually invest gold in it as well to get that back. But I don't think we need to at the moment because we did a pretty good job in terms of getting more gold. But this means we've got to do something with the gold. We can't have gold sitting around doing nothing. So, for this, let's probably get some more weapons and, of course, more properties. This is our advisor here telling us the best things to do. So, we can do that. Let's see if we can issue any more loans, actually, quickly. Ah, here we do loan default 2.7. So, we'll get 1,000 for that. That's that's uh, 1,000 per turn. We've got plenty of money at the moment, so that's not too much of a problem. No one's in overdue at the moment. This is fear here, so if we need to, we can send people in. We can kill them all. Make sure we're doing that. And with generating fear, you do that through the guards, as I mentioned earlier on. Okay, so more weapons. Let's take a look at this. How much more? We've got plenty of iron, so I think more weapons is going to be something that we're going to want to look into getting. Definitely. Definitely. Should we just get a load of halberds? How much are they selling for each? So they're four, they're three. So I'm assuming I can sell halberds for a bit more because they're a little bit more expensive. Now, if we were getting wood, uh, this would be the bows and the crossbows that we'll be looking at. But let's get some halberds for now. Can we check on the wars? Oh, there's a lot more wars here. I, I'm guessing the wars haven't technically started yet. So if we go to this, they still don't have any allies. We're still doing pretty well. I don't think they've actually initiated the war yet. Maybe I think they're moving into each other at the moment, so that will that will take a little bit of time to happen. But if we win, then people will be like, "Hey, that guy's cool. He knows he knows who to invest in," and that sort of thing, of course. And let's look back into our investments. Okay, we can get a farm here. Produces grain. Now we can sell grain on the civilian market, so we've got plenty of money. So we might as well be getting that at the moment. I mean, any money you've got here, you really want to be you know, just putting it out into places um, and making sure that you're you're really making the most of it. And we can see our farms in here. And uh, yeah, so this is our farm at the moment. This is how much. If we can start stockpiling some grain, that's going to be useful later on for something to exchange. Let's get one more batch of weapons. Let's get halberds. They sell for the most, I think. And then... We've probably got a lot to sell now. So this is going pretty well. Uh, I think, yeah, that war there. Now, we want to find uh, Pete one that are pretty, pretty good, pretty close. Let's take this war here, Austria and Wallonia. Oh, no, Austria and the Nevers. Let's go to this war. Oh, my. These guys are really got, oh, my, they have a lot of allies. We're going to join the war on the side of the Nevers. We're going to sell them a ton of weapons. An absolute ton. We're getting 5,700 for that. So that's going to be brilliant. I think, yeah, so definitely halberds are really what we want to be selling. Wow, they sell for quite a lot. So now we're really starting to get some money in. Really starting to get some money in. And what I think is probably a good option is... I mean, we're getting um, our money's going up, so we're not losing anything. But maybe what we're going to want to be doing is investing and selling some of the property and then buying a new country so we can start investing more places from there. But for the meantime, I think and as long as we're still getting some stuff coming in. Ah, uh, yeah, so we've got this is going to be stone, so we'll make sure we can get that sorted as well. So we can sell this for 10,000. Oh wow, this cottage has got 16,000. This is bringing us a decent amount of money in, if I'm going to be honest. So we sort of want to be keeping this, but this is 10,000. So we're going to sell this farm for now, just so we can go back to the map. And where was it? Here we go. Let's purchase this sorted. So now, this is interesting. This isn't the best place ever. It's uh, not great. It's got a decent amount of wealth for something of that price. But, but at the same time, now, if we uh, make sure 
we can go back here. I think if we go to the next move. Ah, there we go. Congratulations. The country of Japan, with our support, was able to smash the forces in the state of the Yemen. Our investments in the territory of the winner have not lost their value. Great. So that was a good person to invest in. They won the war. But now we're getting more places in like this. More houses, which are always great for building up our money. Now, quickly before I end this video, of course, I'm going to just quickly check our espionage. See uh, how that's going up here. Okay, so we now can get our relationship up with both these places, which is great, which is great. But that's sort of the what you're going to want to be doing. Getting a lot of weapons, selling them to people, being a warmonger is probably the best way to win money. Now you can do it by other ways like selling agriculture, all that sort of stuff, selling it to civilians, putting out loans. But really if you want to be getting in the big bucks later game, you're definitely going to be wanting investing in wars. You know how it is in war dogs. That's the way to do it. That's always the way to do it. Although, don't do it in real life. You'll get in trouble. 